All right. Howdy, 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 everybody. This is Micah Curtis. Big Micah C. Thank you all for, honestly, f making the uh, the One Year War series as successful as it was. I'm still super psyched about it that, you know, not just the breakdowns, but also the reviews of Thunderbolt and so on and so forth. You know, the fact that they did so well, for me, is super encouraging. One thing I'm actually planning on doing, I'm probably going to edit it together over the weekend, is a sort of a super cut. Well, not really a super cut, but one big shebang of the One Year War. Everything in one video. So that you guys can enjoy the, um, you know, the whole thing in just one big video. Even though everything is in a playlist. But anyway, one thing that I decided to do as sort of a break from the norms in regards to this channel is I wanted to still do a Gundam video, but I said to myself, let's do a Gundam Q and a, let's give people an opportunity to ask me Gundam oriented questions and I'll answer them and I'll do these every once in a while, but they are going to be exclusive to patrons. Patrons get to ask the questions basically. So if you're not a patron of the channel already, please head down to the links in the description. You can go through Patreon or subscribe star, whichever one you prefer and you become a patron, I do this sort of stuff, you're going to get questions answered, you're also going to get access to my Discord server, so on and so forth, to hang out with a lot of other cool people who are fans of my work. So, with that said, let's go ahead and get down to it. We're just going to go question by question, they're going to be thrown up on the screen, thank you to everybody who submitted them, let's get rolling. So, first question, and this is honestly one that I really loved, then that's why I'm starting with it, is which Gundam series do you think that its English dub improved over the original Japanese version? I can really only think of one that I would pick for this, and I may still get crucified for it, but fuck it. I really think that, honestly, the English dub of G Gundam is a lot better than the original Japanese which I understand that some people are going to disagree with me on that, and you're welcome to do so. But I have to say, I like the English version's voices, at least of certain characters, a lot more than I do the Japanese. I really, really think that... I forget that his name is um, Mark Gaither or something like that, who uh, voices Domon Kashu. I feel like he's a lot better than the Seiyu on that one. I absolutely think that David Petit is way better with Master Asia than his Japanese counterpart. I like Chibity Crockett's voice actor a lot more. I like Argo Gulski's voice actor a lot more. Though, admittedly, the two are pretty close in regards to, like, how they portray the character. You know, I just feel like there's just something about the English dub on that one that hits a lot of the right spots. Yeah, it's, it's corny and stuff like that, but at the same time, it really was just the right storm to really have the kind of a dub that, you know, a super robot show, which is essentially what Gundam, or G Gundam is, is it's, a, it's, a, it's a Gundam show, but it's largely a, you know, super robot martial arts show. And I really felt like they just, they nailed kind of the tone, and I feel like they nailed the emotion and things like that in key moments really better than anyone else. I mean, the, the raw emotion in in Domon's voice, the very first time he does the Shining Finger Sword, is, like, he, you could tell he wants to tear somebody's face off. Like, it, it's just fantastic. So yeah, but a lot of the other ones I would say that they're they're kind of even, except for Zeta. Zeta sounds a lot better in Japanese than it does in English. But anyway, that would be my pick. It would definitely be G Gundam. Another question. This one's a gunpla oriented question, which I like answering these. I love specifically building master grade gunpla because for those who don't know, maybe you're new to the channel, I am a big dude. I'm six feet, two inches tall. I have hands that are the size of, of skillets. I kid you not. And trying to, like, finagle small parts is annoying. I have a real grade of Galgaigar 
that has been sitting in my office for it feels like more than half a year that I painted a little bit of it and haven't touched it since because I know I'm going to get really annoyed with the really small parts. But anyway, let's go ahead and answer this Gunpla question. What master grade Gunpla, in my opinion, needs to be redone either due to being easy to break or how some of it looks compared to the Gundam that it's made for? Uh, for? So... I would have to say if there's any... Because this is essentially, you know, asking what what Master Grades I feel need a 2.0. I really feel like there's quite a few. And the ones I feel more, like, stronger than any other would definitely have to be just about anything from Stardust Memory. So the GPO-1, both the full Vernier and the normal, and the GPO-2, I really feel like they could really stand a 2.0 kit. The, you know, I, I haven't even built the GPO 2 because I lost a couple parts for it right out of the gate, and it was the Vulcans. And I'll tell you this right now. The Vulcans on the GPO 2's Master Grade are so small that there's no way I could distinguish them from just, like, a small piece of a nub from the Gunpla Plastic. So, those are probably lost, and I'm going to probably have to, you know, ask somebody to do, like, a plot plate version of it for me, or have to do one of my own to substitute for that. But regardless, in looking through the parts of it, it's basically just a 1-100 high grade with a little bit of interior skeleton. The same could be said of the GPO-1, they really, really could use Remix. The GPO-3 is a bit better, mostly because it was made a little bit later than the 1 and the 2. And I I didn't mind my experience in building the GPO-3, but, man, the GPO-1 and 2 could really use, you know, 2.0s for sure, or Verkaz or something. And it's really weird to me that they haven't done it yet, just because of the fact that Stardust Memory is so goddamn popular. So those would be my first picks. But I would also argue that some of the mobile suits from the 08MS team, I certainly wouldn't mind seeing them get 2.0s. The Goof Custom has aged, and it's not as good as the Goof 2.0 as a mobile suit kit. Um... I don't mind the Easy 8 and the ground type mobile suits either. They are they're good beginner builds, but they don't have the complex arm construction that the 2.0s have, which is really unfortunate because you can't do as much with the arms as you would really like to. So so that would be my picks, I guess, is would be Stardust Memory and 8th MS team kits. I really feel like those could use 2.0s. And I'm genuinely shocked, given the popularity of those OVAs, that that hasn't been done yet. One thing that I am looking forward to that I will freely admit, though, is that there is apparently going to be a new version. It's a third-party kit called the Solomon 1100 Faisalis. And it's going to cost like 130 bucks, but it's basically a GPO-2 with a full inner frame... That looks gorgeous, and yeah, whenever I get the chance, I am going to buy that for sure. And then I'm hoping at some point I'll get the chance to, you know, repaint my GPO-1 and make it look a lot better. But it's going to take some work. A couple more Gunpla questions. Thoughts on the RE-100 line? The E-Freak Kai and the Bawu kits, for example. So I have not built the E-Freak Kai or Bawu kits. I have built the... Deja to help complete my Argama shelf on my uh, in my bedroom, which well Argama Rock Hylum shelf. There's a couple more suits that I need to you know complete that shelf with because I have the Nemo, I have the Zeta, you know I wanna I have the double Zeta, I have the new Verka, I have the double Zeta Verka, you know um, I have the Master Grade, Mark II 2.0. I already mentioned my Nemo. I've got the Hyaku Shiki. And then, you know, I got that Deja to, to complement it. I really liked it. It was a simple build. 
it really was like building a 1-100 high grade, but it's very detailed for, you know, a kit. It's not quite as detailed as a master grade, but it's not so far behind that you are, you're going to notice at first glance. But it's a fun little kit, decently poseable. I also own the 1-100 version of the Nightingale from that same line. I just haven't built it yet and painted it because it's going to take a lot of paint because it's huge. And I just don't have the space for it right now. But regardless, I, I don't have anything really negative to say about the ones that I've built. But the problem with it is, is that a lot of those haven't really been available to buy. At least not that I've seen. And the new ones have all been stuff from Seed. And y'all know my opinions on Gundam Seed. I'm not going to spend money on the butthole mouth Gundam. Just, it's not happening. So... So, you know, needless to say, like, the the one I have built, I liked. But, you know, we'll have to see if I get the chance to, to build more of them. Uh, what existing 1144th kit would I like to see a 1100 version of? Man, there's, there's a lot that are kits and mobile suits that I really like that I would love to see 1100s of that haven't happened yet. I would like to see some of the grunt suits from Wing be uh, turned into 1100s. You can kind of finagle a Master Grade Leo out of the Tall Geese kit. You could probably pull it off. But it's going to need some plot plate and stuff like that. And having to go through all that just for a grunt suit is a little bit much. I'd like to see, you know... Well, I'd like to see 1-100s everything from Wayne, to be honest with you. The fact that there's not, like, a Master Grade Mercurius and Ve 8 to me, is criminal. You know, I would love to see a, ma a true Master Grade Leo, a Master Grade Ares, a Master Grade Pisces and Cancer. Like, g give me everything from Wing. I want 1-100 everything from Wing. Because I love Gundam Wing. The other thing that I would really like to see also from, like, 1-100 stuff, even if you just put it up on P Bandai, like, something like the Toad Stritter, I think would be a lot of fun. I really want to see a 1-100... Master Grade EX version of the Kshatriya. And some people have said, well, it would have to be metal reinforced. I don't give a fuck. Especially if it's in the MGEX line. Look, the, the MGEX line, from what I've seen, it's only got two kits so far. The Unicorn and the Strike Freedom. But that's basically the ones where they're saying, hey, these are going to cost a shit ton of money. And they're stupid popular! Fuck it! Gunpla people will buy $100, $200 kits. Because we love Gunpla. I mean, for fuck's sake, I spent, I want to say, like 20 bucks worth of paint in doing my Verka Sazabe, which is one of, like, the pearls of my collection. Doing that thing in candy paint. You know, I spent good money on my Sinanju Stein, my custom one, that is still probably the best build I've ever done. Mostly because I'm just really proud of the racing stripes that I put on the fuel tanks. But, um, you know, the things like that, like, give us bigger, give like, don't hesitate to give us dope-ass 1-100 kits of mobile suits that seem like they'd be a little bit much if they were in 1-100. I will build it. I'll, I'll, I'm, maybe I'm just a fucking madman. I don't know, but I would definitely build a 1-100 Kshatriya. Give me a 1-100 Quinn Mantha. I'll fucking build it. I don't give a shit. I don't care how big it is. I will I will put down a mortgage for a house to have the room for something like that. You know, I just I just really love 1-100 scale gunpla. So, you know, I could go through my list of mobile suits that I really like that I just don't have kits of and you know, there's going to be a lot of them that I I would just love to see it. But yeah, I but if I had to pick one, if I have to pick one, I guess I would say the Kshatriya in 1-100 as an MGEX. What is the dumbest Gundam take you've ever heard? So I'm going to pick on Seed again, uh, largely because I really feel like Gundam Seed fans are kind of annoying. <laughs> I hate to say it. But admittedly, I, I took a huge, huge dump over their favorite alternate universe Gundam story. And they're they're not going to like me either. So it is what it is. But my, my whole thing with it is this. Is 
if you're going to tell me specifically that a Westerner just isn't going to get Gundam Seed, that's, I don't really like the connotations of that because you're kind of essentially saying that the entire nation of Japan has shit taste. <laughs> and that's not the case. <laughs> Look, um, the, the, the simple fact is, is that Gundam Seed, when I analyzed that story, I, I wasn't, analyzing it from a quote-unquote western lens i didn't want it to be fucking die hard i wanted it to be on par with other gundam stories and it just isn't so trying to make it an east versus west thing is ridiculous because a lot of the things that i use whenever i critique fiction are the same standards that i would use on media from any part of the world because a lot of those same principles are used both in the East and the West. You can boil down so many Eastern stories with the old hero with a thousand faces thing, and it applies to so many. It applies to Berserk. It applies to Fist of the North Star. It applies to Gundam. It, you know, if, if anything, I would say that it's, you know, very, very, very important for Gundam, and I really feel like it's one of those things that um, just kind of, you know, translated over because Gundam was very inspired by Star Wars. So you got to look at George Lucas as kind of like one of the big inspirations for Gundam as a creator. And who is he a student of? Joseph Campbell, you know, the hero of the thousand faces. And ultimately that style of storytelling, it permeates the world. It's not specific to one culture. It's something that's observable within all of them. So that's probably the worst take. And I really feel like... I don't know if that person is from the East or if it's just some weeaboo trying to act like he has a better, you know, idea of what Japanese culture is like than I do, which he might, but probably doesn't. But, you know, like saying something like that, I really feel not only is ignorant, but you're, to use a professional wrestling term, you're... Burying a whole nation at that point. In which case, fuck you. Favorite game original mobile suit. So stuff like the Ifrid, the Siskoid, the Ground Gelgoog, the Dolmol, things along those lines. Um, hmm. That is a very good question. I think that I'm kind of leaning towards the Blue Destiny Unit 1. Or the Unit 3. You know, actually, I would, I would probably have to say the Unit 3. Um, more so than any other. I don't know what it is about the Blue Destiny. Just like an all-blue Gundam is kind of cool, to say the least. But the Blue Destiny Unit 3, specifically, I think I like it as much as I do because it takes... You know, it's it's obviously a ground... It's a modified ground-type Gundam so that it can be taken to space, right? And I really feel like it hits a lot of just the the things that I really like in a Gundam design. It has a what I would call like a heroic feel to it. It feels like the hero unit. I like the way that they kind of altered the multi-launcher on the chest to have these interesting like Vulcan guns that are built into it. You know, the head design, of course, is really, really cool. It's got a great color palette with using like a navy blue instead of more of like a royal blue for the blues on it. And it's, it's just kind of your classic... It's a, it's a nice little spin on both, like, the original Gundam and also the ground-type Gundam. And it's just cool looking. And, of course, you know, it, what's not to like about, you know, the exam system? It's it's just a really cool prospect. So, yeah, like, it's it's probably one of my favorite video game exclusive machines. Though the Pixie's another really good one. Um, God, like, there's... there, And I think... The Toadstritter debuted in a video game, if I'm right. I'm looking it up as I start talking like William Shatner. Uh, did this debut in a video game? Oh. Uh, yes, it did. Okay, so yeah, the Toadstritter is another one. I've never played Missing Link because it's not available in English. But uh, the Toadstritter is probably my favorite unit to use in... Um, whatchamacallit, in GBO2. And it's it's just a blast to play as. And not to mention, it's just this unique 
mix of Xeon and Federation technology. It, it's just such a unique take on a Gundam. And it, again, it still has that heroic look of a Gundam, but it's got, you know, little pieces of Xeon tech here and there. You know, it's, it's just cool looking. It's just a, it's a dope looking mobile suit. And it's also got like the Bawu's shield. And I've always felt like the Bawu had a really cool shield design. So, so yeah, those would definitely be my picks. Do I like Gundam X? I have a lot of positive things to say about Gundam X. I think it's a good series. I don't think it's great. I don't, I don't think it's like world, my, like it, it, it didn't rock my world when I finished it, but I was very happy with my experience. Uh, you can just ask, like, uh, Xavier, who is a buddy of mine, who you guys have seen on the channel, works, you know, uh, for me at Grindstone Arts, and uh, is a, just a good friend all around. Uh, Xavier and, and I, like, we had a, a long discussion about it after I finished it, and kind of like the, the ups and downs of it. To sum it up, you know, I'll do a full review of it at some point, but to, to shorten it, it has some of the best Gundam intros ever. Revolution and Dreams are just amazing songs to get somebody hyped for a for a television show. Um, the X and the Double X have some of the coolest designs that I think Okawara has ever done. The Double X, in my opinion, is like one of the most intimidating looking mobile suits of all time, right up there with Barbatos and Wing Zero. Like it's and the Zeta. Like it's a scary looking mobile suit. Um, Oh, and the Epion, too. The Epion's also a pretty, you know, sp like, threatening mobile suit. But regardless, uh, the the one thing that I would say about, about X is it struggles whenever it comes to aesthetics. I really like the idea of, like, a Mad Max Gundam, but it, it didn't really end up like that. Um, but sort of like a post-disaster sort of a, a thing, like where there has been an, a, a, essentially an apocalypse event that changes the way that humanity has to work. And, um, you know, trying to do something like that. I liked the idea of having n no real Shark clone. I thought that was a really interesting twist. Um, and that you kind of think that... Um, well, it, there is actually a Shark clone in the show, but you don't see him until the very end. And it's not the Shark clone of our lead character, it's Jamil's Shar, essentially. And you start to realize as the show goes on that Jamil, who is an amazing character, by the way, Jamil is essentially supposed to be a parallel to Amuro Ray. And just stuff like that. Like, I really feel like Gundam X had a lot of really great ideas. It struggled with aesthetics. And some people will tell you that aesthetics don't matter. They're lying. That's bullshit. I'm going to say this... And again, I'll admit my bias right out of the gate. I try to do that as much as I can. But people who say aesthetics don't matter in visual mediums are full of themselves. Aesthetics absolutely fucking matter. You know, aside from doing YouTube stuff, I'm a comic book creator. I'm a comic book writer. And I work with artists all the time. And trust me when I tell you that the more time that you, you take on aesthetics the more time you, you make sure that you're communicating things properly through the visuals, it enhances the story. Part of the reason that Gundam Wing is as well-loved and it hit so well with people is it has very strong aesthetics. You know, from costume design, character design, so on and so forth. Like, it's all striking and very eye-catching. Um, the mobile suits have the exact same thing going for them. Whereas a lot of that stuff was really missing in Gundam X because admittedly, they had a couple people that worked on Wing on it, but they didn't have them in, like, the right spots. Like, the orchestral score in Gundam X is garbage. It is terrible. There are points where it is literally offbeat. Like, and I, I don't mean, like, offbeat, like, weird. I mean, like, it's off of its own beat. It's off rhythm. It just doesn't have that punch that it really needed to really get the energy going or to, to properly set the mood in a lot of scenes. So yeah, the orchestral score, not very good. Some of the character designs are good. Some of them aren't. Some of the mobile suit designs are good. Some of them aren't. I don't know what the fuck they were doing with the leopard. Yeah, this is probably the second worst Gundam take that I've ever heard. If somebody tried to tell me that the leopard was cooler than the heavy arms, in which case, go fuck yourself. 
But um, the Air Master's all right, though. But the, the Versago, or Versago, or however you pronounce it, and then the other one, the Crab, kind of lame looking. So, so yeah, like, I like Gundam X, but it also struggled in some areas that a lot of other Gundam shows didn't, and I think that's part of the reason why it failed. What five Gundam games should be ported to newer systems the most? I don't know if I have five. Um, because there's, there's a lot of good ones. I would have to say that I'm going to alter this a little bit to stuff like I think should get like HD re-releases, um, remasters, things like that. Like, I think that we need to see, I want to see remasters of Federation vs. Zeon because that's probably my favorite, um, one year war video game. Um, I would like to see, um, though a full Gundam game that kind of follows the template of Journey to Jabro, but it's the whole one year war for Amaro. I would love something like that. Um, so, so we'll, yeah, well, you know what? I'm, I might be able to come up with five. So we'll use Journey to Jabro as the second one, you know, kind of remake it and do more with it. Um, I'd like to see, yeah, a, an HD re-release of Federation vs. Zeon. I feel like Battle Assault 1 and 2 could be remastered. Um, and I would I would really enjoy seeing that. Uh, Battle Assault 2 is a lot of fun. Never played the third one. I haven't heard many positive things about it. But um, but yeah, Battle, Gun and Battle Assault uh, just, is just a fucking a blast to play. Um, I would also like to see a remake of Zeonic Front. I would love to see a full-on remake of it. You know, same sort of you know, Rainbow Six inspired, you know, strategy game. But, um, but yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun, fun to do for sure. So is that five? I think that's five. Yeah, that's five. So, so yeah, to sum it up, give me a remake of Journey to Jabiro, but make it like the whole fucking shebang of the Gundam story with like some really cool fucking gameplay. Give me a remake of uh, Zeonic Front, I think that would be a blast to see. Give me a remaster of Federation vs. Zeon. But if you want to remake that one to have more mobile suits on the fucking screen, I would not argue. Um, and then, of course, I would love to see Gundam Battle Assault 1 and 2 get, you know, HD remasters, because those games were were a lot of fun. And I would love to see a new installment. I'd love to see a fourth one. Like, give it to Arc System Works and make it, like, a tag fighter or something like that. Like, um... Because you would, like, there's so many suits that you could put in there that would just be a blast. And then, you know, if you want to do seasons of downloadable content, like, that's not hard to do. You know, you can kind of start with the basics and then just kind of move it out. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people that would, you know, absolutely love to play a game like that. That, you know, in the fighting game community, if they saw that, they would be all over it. Favorite redhead in Gundam? Oh, God. Um, I think it kind of depends on, like, the context of, like, favorite redhead. Because if we're talking about, like, just as, like, a good-looking chick, there there's a few of them. I mean, you have Monique Cadillac. You also have the chick from Thunderbolt whose name escapes me at the moment. Um, and then you have Anil L. from Gundam X, who probably would be, like, the best-looking one. But I think, like, that that's, like, with looks. Or you'd have to say Marita Cruz. Um, but I would actually have to say that... So so with looks, yeah, I'd say it's a tie between Marita and um, Anil L. Which, funnily enough, this really isn't a spoiler. Unicorn's been out for a while now. Um, Anil L in Gundam X is voiced by the same woman who voices Elpeo Puru in the in Gundam Double Zeta, Chaco Honda. So that's that's kind of an interesting connection there. But regardless, um yeah, for looks it would be those two, but just as an overall character, oh like I would actually have to say it would be a tie between Marida and her older sister, quote unquote, Elpeo Puru. And that's what I find kind of, like, really interesting about, um... So, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. The funny thing is, is that when it comes to, uh, Puru, like, for some reason, there's a lot of people that she's, like, their least favorite character in Double Zeta. 
she's one of mine, but admittedly it's because my oldest niece, and I have six nieces and nephews, my oldest niece is a kusogaki you could say um very much a brat <laughs> but i got uh, she's family i love her for it you know and uh el pio peru reminds me a lot of her in regards to like the attitude and you know always wanting attention and and things like that um you know being very emotional very, being very pouty when she's upset so on and so forth um, when I watched Double Zeta, I, I just like the whole time I was seeing her, like this reminds me so much of my niece. Like it's, it's kind of ridiculous. So, um, so yeah, those would be like as characters. That's who I would pick. Cause again, I think Puru is a good character in Double Zeta. And then Marida in Unicorn is the best character. And I don't really think that it's like a, uh, a contest to be honest with you it's uh the 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 writer clearly when he came up with her idea put a lot of love and care into developing her and making her the most interesting thing on screen it's unfortunate that he just kind of dropped the ball near the end of it but then again i don't really blame like the the original writer of unicorn for that i blame the people who like were behind the the television series slash OVA, you know, episodes, because they alter the original story of Unicorn so much to be a lot lighter and a lot more hopeful, which whenever I get around to reviewing Unicorn, I will eventually reveal why that's a stupid fucking move. So regardless, um, yeah, those would, those would definitely be my favorite redheads in Gundam. Another question here. What is your idea for a new Gundam series? Since clearly they're never going to adapt Crossbones. God damn. <laughs> That's a brutal question. <laughs> um, God. My idea for a Gundam series. You know, one thing that I had hoped that the Witch from Mercury was going to do is like cyberpunk Gundam. Kind of play a little bit more with transhumanism because they, they kind of touch on it a little bit in, um, in iron blooded orphans. They obviously touch on it a very small amount in the witch from Mercury, but it's, it's not really that good. I'll go, I'll, I'll discuss Witch from Mercury at, other, at a different time, but ultimately, um, ultimately I would have to say that like I would I would love to see a cyberpunk inspired Gundam series that focuses a lot on pilots that have a level of oneness with their machines. That would just be really really interesting to see because when it comes right down to it I really feel like you know so we, we've got pilots that say I am a Gundam. Let's Let's actually fucking have that. Let's actually have someone be their fucking mobile suit. You know, that would be, that would be what I would love to see. But the other big thing for me is I would really love to see, um, a, a series where there is a, um, a bit more of a focus. Let's get back to war. Like Gundam is war stories. And that's another one of my gripes with the witch for Mercury is like, the interesting stuff wasn't even happening in the television show. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, the, um, God, I'm going to have to do a whole video on that. But regardless, um, that's what I would like to see. Also, I, I disagree. I think they're going to animate Crossbone at some point. I just think that they're, they're biding their time until they get Hathaway out of the way. They don't want to jump ahead of it. So, Okay, if I could remake any Gundam series to give it better animation or may or improve in general, which one would I pick? Probably Gundam X, to be honest with you. I really feel like if you just keep the story the same and um, keep, you know, some of the character designs the same, but let's get some better mobile designs in there. Let's, you know, don't just bring back Okawara. Get Katoki in there. Get Katoki working on those grunt suits and shit like that to kind of improve those designs, you know. Um, let, let's do shit like that. Uh, so Gundam X would definitely be one that I feel like if it was remade, 
especially like in this day and age, I feel like if it if it came out, people would would really eat up a remake of it. Other than that, I can't really think of any that like I would really want to see a remake of because I would really worry that the people behind it would muck it up. Yeah. The part of me would like to say, like, I wouldn't mind seeing the original remade, and then I think about it, I'm like, no, I would really mind if they remade the original Gundam. I would really fucking mind! <laughs> Alright, now, for the final questions, um, the fi my favorite Gundam series overall is Wing. And I'm probably gonna catch shit for that, but it's Wing. After Wing, it's Double Zeta. After double, after double Zeta, it's a tie between Iron-Blooded Orphans and G-Gundam. Actually, wait. I would have to say, like, it's a three-way tie for number three, because the original... Like, with those, with those, like... With those shows specifically, like, I could sit down and just watch them and with a, with a bucket of popcorn and, and just have a great day. But, yeah. The, like, my favorite will always be Wing. I really feel like... Outside of the original series, Wing had, like, the best balance of, you know, storytelling, philosophy, interesting characters, and things of that nature. Um, you know, it, it does have its problems, admittedly, but, you know, I'm one of those people that I really feel like the positives of Gundam Wing outweigh its flaws considerably. I think, I think it's a great fucking series. Favorite Gundam character, Hero. Oh god. I would have to say it's it's a, it's kind of like a three-way tie between Amaro because Amaro is is just the goat. Um let's say Amaro, Judo Ashta because Judo Ashta is also amazing. And then of course, um I have to I also of course Hiro Yui because it's Hiro and I I've always loved how Hiro Yui is such an interesting twist on the Gundam protagonist because he's an assassin. You know, he's literally a child assassin. You know, as in, like, he was trained to be an assassin by his biological father and then um, was enlisted to, you know, into a guerrilla warfare where he's, you know, meant to just, like, do, you know, guerrilla missions, go in, kill people, leave. So I always thought that that was a really interesting twist on the Gundam protagonist. And the same thing with Judo Ashta. Judo is also, like, the boy who who stumbles into a Gundam, but the difference between him and someone like Camille or Amaro is Judo actually went into this with a really good head on his shoulders. And I really like how he sort of becomes in a lot of ways like the the um the thing that holds everybody together in in Double Zeta and I've I've always really appreciated that about him as a character. So so yeah, those would be my picks for like my favorite heroes. And then, of course, non-pilot hero, Bright Noah. Fucking Bright Noah is great. Favorite Gundam villain is Trace Kushranada. Trace Kushranada is fucking terrifying in some ways. Between his charisma and his, his skills and his ability to outthink people, his strategizing, he's always a step ahead of you. And that's in my opinion a more frightening thing because it's one thing to be the federation fighting Zeon and dealing with a madman at the head of their army. You know, that's one thing. It's another thing to be a guerrilla fighter with a very advanced mobile suit, but you're outnumbered and on top of that the guy who leads the other military is considerably wiser than you are. Not just smarter, wiser than you are. That's a scary combination. You have to keep in mind, he completely neutralized Wu Fei with a sword and without a mobile suit. Because he played into Wu Fei's ego. Like, there's little things like that I'm, I'm definitely a, a fan of. Like, he's, he's a great villain. And... He, again, he has, like, some of the best villain monologues ever because he really has those... How do I put this? Those moments where he... He seems so right. 
or so convinced that he's right that you have a hard time arguing against it. Like, I, I obviously don't agree with his beliefs at all, but, like, man, he presents them in such an appealing way. And then finally, favorite Gundam Mecha. Well, I did a top ten list of this, but, you know, as as time goes on, sometimes things change, but my pick for number one is never going to change, and it's Wing Zero. There's something so unique about both of Wing Zero's designs, both the original one and the... Uh, and the one from Endless Walt. And I think that the elegance of the Wing Zero and Endless Waltz is incredibly striking, but the intimidation factor of Wing Zero in the television show is second to none. It is, it is a frightening mobile suit. You know, you can't not look at that thing and not be scared because you know with one trigger pull... It, it can just destroy... Like, the, the mass destruction that it's capable of causing is, is downright frightening. And the difference between it and, like, the Gundam X is that it doesn't need to wait for the moon to be out. It's just point, pull trigger, and then you die. So... So, yeah. Well, those were all good questions. Uh, pretty good stuff, guys. So, if you're not a patron already, like I mentioned, Patreon links and things like that are gonna be in the description of this particular video. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, helping me support the channel, I'm going to tell you right now, it's greatly appreciated, especially because, you know, uh, we got the, the, un the unfortunate yellow money sign for the most recent Gundam video. So trust me when I tell you guys like that bit of support, it doesn't just go to me for those wondering. It also goes to my video editor like that. That sort of thing is massive for us. And we really appreciate you guys. And we also appreciate you guys for making what well, me and Shirt Dude are doing here such a success. Like, you're all awesome. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and take off. Thank you so much for the questions. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Micah Curtis, your favorite vanilla gorilla. Have yourselves a great rest of your day.